so I just ask you to continue um, to pray for that family. Amen? Amen. Amen. Verse, we're going to begin at verse 23. Verse 23 says, And being let go, they went to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said unto them. When they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God, which has made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them is. I'm going to start right there. I know I told you I'm going to start right there. Look what they said in verse 24. They said that when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God, yes. which has made heaven and earth and the sea and all that in them is. I just like to encourage somebody, listen, when you find yourself going through, you need to remember this verse right here. Amen. You listen, when you find yourself dealing with something that is above your head, you, you just need to remember this verse and just say, Lord, thou art God. That preach right there by itself. I ain't got which had made heaven and earth. That that seemed to me that if you God that made heaven and earth, and you made everything that's in them seas, surely you can have what I'm going through. I'm just trying to help somebody. And I myself that I'm just trying to help somebody this morning that's going through something. You need to realize who the God is we serve. This morning from the subject, the power of a prayer meeting. Yeah. The power of a prayer meeting. Yeah. The power of, of a prayer meeting. There's power in a prayer meeting. Yeah. Kill Brown, along with seven of his accomplices, was getting ready to rob the jewelry store in Des Moines, Iowa. He was the stepson of a Pentecostal preacher. He grabbed this guy by the hand and said, let me lead us in prayer before we rob the jewelry store. He prayed for God's protection as they carried out their house. But apparently God was not listening because the robbery was stopped and the little congregation of praying criminals all ended up with federal indictments. This morning, my brothers and sisters, who are prayer meeting in most churches have pure motives than these burglars, in most cases, they are not any more effective. And the reason why many of our prayers are not effective is that because in most churches, when we gather to pray, there's little gravity in the request that are being mentioned. But not only is there little gravity in the request that are being mentioned, there's little urgency in the prayers that are being offered. Because if the truth be told, there are some who stand in every Sunday and pray the same prayer. There are some here that stand here with these watered down prayers, with the shades and Christian catchphrases. And when you ask them what they're praying for, many of them really don't understand. And if you are confused in your prayer, that does not mean that most of us are confused as well. But when we turn to the book of Acts, in the fourth chapter, we find the record of a prayer meeting in, in the early church. The subject of this prayer meeting was quite different from the headings that we have. The subject in this prayer meeting was nothing about hip pain, it was nothing about sniffles, it was nothing about sneezes, it was nothing about bursitis or tonsillitis or arthritis that many of our prayers are filled with today. But when you look at this prayer, you discover that this prayer was brief and their requests were few and simple. Because at the time of the text, they had been threatened by the Jewish authorities and warned to stop preaching the gospel. The Bible said that these early church members cried out to God to help them as they carried out the mission that Jesus had given them to do. And then in verse 24, it said, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord. The concept 
answer a prayer got heaven's attention. Now y'all wish you shout right now. The concert of prayer got heaven's attention. We said to me today that if I'm going to pray, if I don't get anybody else's attention, the one attention that I do want to get, I do want to get God's attention. And the Bible said that the cause they got God's attention, that God responded to his people immediately and impressively. The text speaks to us today, our children reminds us that the most powerful and effective thing our church does should be our prayer. Yes. Right. Yes. Are y'all hear me? Yes, sir. And one thing I have discovered about prayer is prayer don't have to be long. That's right. That's right. But tell you, maybe your prayer need to be strong. Many, many times we pray, we don't recognize 
the sovereignty of God. Because if you really understood the sovereignty of God, when you got up on your prayer, baby, you would go ahead and shout anyway. But if you really recognize the sovereignty of God, and you recognize who it was you pray for, you walk away from that thing, baby, like it's already done. If you really recognize who the Lord preached with, baby, I think mean, I will. Who you were praying to, you will walk like it already had been done, but you got to recognize the sovereignty of God. Son of God, but secondly, they recognize the sufficiency of God. Watch the text. Look at verse, look at verse 24. Again. They call out to the Lord. Ain't not for the mercy. I'm not making this up. Lord, you are God. We did make heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them. In their eyes, they knew they were being threatened by the sand that you do a couch. But in their eyes, the sand that Oh, 
that word. Power that word. Power that word. Because if you notice here, the request offered at this prayer meeting in Acts chapter 4 revealed that these Christians were ready to do the work that God had given them. But they also understood that apart from his enablement, their efforts were futile. Now, you hear me here. Look at the text. Look at the text. You notice verse 30. In verse 29, the people asked for Moses. Then in verse 30, they asked God to do what only he could do. What they asked to do in verse 30? By standing forth our hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of our holy child, Jesus. Let me tell you something. This goes back to what we've been talking about. We must be bold enough to preach the gospel in a world that will resist us. That our preaching alone cannot change anything. Yes, right. Are y'all hearing me? Yes. The power of God, somebody shout the power of God, yes. must infuse everything we do. Yes. Because if the power of God is not infusing what we do, baby, we just do it in vain. That's right. Two men. Holy papers in front of the canvas. Both men are given the assignment to paint a sunset. One man named is Roy, the other man named is Rembrandt. Rembrandt sunshine is so striking, so real, it's almost magical. But next to it, the Roy painting looks childish and messy. What makes the difference? There's something that's out of Rembrandt. A God given gift that enables his work to with the papers to be extraordinary and special. What is that picture? All churches have basically been given the same task. The gift of the Spirit means that most churches have basically the same tool. But yet one tool touches the world through its efforts, while the other writer dies. What is the difference? It's the power of God. It's the power of God. Let me get out of here. But not only. Lastly, let's look at what their prayer received. What their prayer received. So here's the thing. What is truly unique about this particular prayer meeting is what occurred just after this prayer meeting. Because this was not your typical sleepy Wednesday night service. Because the text says that the Bible broke out at this prayer meeting. I'm not making this stuff up. Look at verse 31. He says, when they had prayed, the plagues were what? Shaken. Yes. Where they were assembled together, yes. and they were all what? Filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spread the word of God with boldness. In John 16, 24, Jesus said, Acts and shall receive. The promise is certainly fulfilled in this chapter because as the people called on God, he responded to their requests. But notice here a couple of things about what they received in that prayer, and I promise you I'm going to get out of here. First of all, notice here, they got a definite response. They got a definite response. Because verse 31 said that no sooner than they had said amen, no sooner than they had given a benediction, no sooner
intimacy yes, Lord. of God. Yes, Lord. In this meditation, when you pray, you at least want your prayer to make it to heaven. Yes. You at least, you, you ain't got to be needy, man. You ain't got to be bothered by him. You ain't got to holler here and there with your meek and all of a sudden. Baby, you just got to open up your mouth and talk to God. Are you hearing me here? Proud in a conversation.
God, tell me he's not afraid of your question. It's not unbiblical to ask God questions. I ask him every week, okay, Lord, what you to preach? Where you want me to go? I've already prepared all seven sermons for the city church. They have to come. Okay, now you tell me go somewhere else. Okay, well, I got to do what I got to do. There's a reason behind this message. And my prayer for you today is trust God. Trust God. What do you mean, trust God? Put your weight on him. Yes. 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 Sit in this chair. I'm not going to ask this chair how many people have sat here before. I'm not going to ask this chair what are the weight on you. I'm just going to sit in and trust that it's going to hold me up. Acceptable. 